Be honest, be a good person, do the best you can, be nice to people. Rose Hare, a loving wife and mother to four children, two boys and two twin girls. Courtney, Debbie, Debbie, Dan. How grateful um, I am and my brothers and sisters that we, you know, had such a great mom and family. And no, she always, you know, provided a good home for us, and you know, we never wanted for anything, and always knew we were taken care of. We always had Christmas, and I think I always gave you some kind of birthday party, didn't I? Always. I gave him what I could. I, I don't remember. If I turned them down, I flat couldn't afford it or didn't think they should do it. Rose's life began growing up in a small town where she learned lots of lessons that she would carry with her. So really and truly, small town of Monkey, uh, my life wasn't really too exciting. I had a, a good, very good mother and, and father and uh, uh, three brothers. She was uh, the only daughter of her parents and she had uh, three brothers, and I know that she was a good daughter, and I know that she was a good sister. And then she married my dad, and I know she was a good wife, and then she had her children, and I know she was a good mother, and then she had her grandchildren, and I know she was a good grandmother, and she provided us all with a, um, a loving home environment. Went to school, I went to, after I finished high school, I went to a trade school, and then I worked as a stenographer and bookkeeper. My family was not wealthy. My father worked in a restaurant and finally he owned one of his own. It was called the Columbia and Bucky. We had a good Christmas, but no one didn't always have birthday parties, so I didn't. They never forgot family birthdays and they always had a cake. In fact, to tell you the truth, I can't remember the first birthday party. Oh, I do remember the book. I do. And my mother did give me a birthday party in the church hall. Now that, that's the first big one. I, I mean, really big one. Oh, uh, if I remember correctly, <laughs> she made hamburgers for us. <laughs> hamburgers and birthday cake. She always found a way to have a positive attitude and a good sense of humor. We didn't have cars then. I was walking to uh, wherever, could have been church, and I had two dimes and had to cross over like a wooden bridge that had little, you know, where money could fall through. I dropped one. I said, that's for church. <laughs> Can't believe you remember that. That's another one was for the movement. <laughs> the truth is the truth. And my only really vacation was a young girl. I, I'd go to Crowley and spend a week or so with them, you know. And that was like the only vacation I had as a child. But it was, I enjoyed that, you know. I never could swim, but, you know, I'd paddle. <laughs> I still can't swim. <laughs> I never had to go to principal's office, though. Her children know all too well their mother has a sharp mind and quick wit. She loves to go to La Fonda's, have margaritas. She's smart. She's, um, she's got a good, really a good memory, especially long term. And um, she's uh, very funny and nice and friendly and encouraging and you know wants everybody to have a good time. She's always been very good with numbers and with uh, you know record keeping and uh, organization skills and that kind of thing and um, you know she has uh, friends that she's had for many years. And I would say stern for sure. Very funny. She's very funny. Uh, quick wit, dry wit. A lot of people that don't know her would be surprised she had that wit. <laughs> Because she comes across very reserved and you know conservative, but uh, you know she can she can lay someone out pretty good. <laughs> she has the best sculpted camellias in Bender Gardens. <laughs> she always had uh, instilled self confidence. You know, we just were were taught discipline at a young, young age. You know, and we just were pretty well behaved kids, all of us. <laughs> no, that was Daddy. He would. 
the John or wh whoever I was dating, we, the car would come up the driveway and Daddy would flash the light. In other words, time to come in. <laughs> there was no dilly-dallying in the car. Dan recalls how she often relies on those closest to her. In more recent times, we have one of those uh, uh, alert buttons. Well, she's had several situations where she needed to push it, but she didn't want to bother them. So I can't convince her that's why you pay the fee. Push the button. They will come help you. you know, she didn't want to bother them, so you know, I could be in Florida, but she's going to call me for help. Uh, situations like that. Would that be called stubborn? I guess, yeah. Maybe that's stubborn. Uh, Rose found a natural talent in the kitchen and on the dance floor. And Mama was a great cook. A wonderful cook. Never used a cookbook. Dan finally got her to write down her eggplant dressing and submitted it to um, his Kiwanis cookbook so that I could have it in writing. So I've ha have tried to um, replicate it at Thanksgiving and whatnot, but most of those recipes are in her head and they're not written down. Mom and Daddy love to dance. They're great dancers. And both of my brothers are great dancers. Courtney was a great dancer. Dan's a terrific dancer. And so we grew up dancing, and we had to entertain the company, all of us. We would, they would turn that stereo on, and all of us would dance around the room. The children entertained, you know, every, the company. It was a blast. We loved it. You know, we did it for years. She was always big about hosting a birthday party for me, and my birthday is in the spring, so I always had, like, you know, a spring theme, Easter egg hunt, or, you know, something out in the yard games and that kind of thing. But uh, no, she always, you know, provided a good home for us and, you know, we never wanted for anything and always knew we were taken care of. Mom was a stay-at-home uh, mother. We didn't dare say she didn't work because she worked really hard as a housewife. She just wasn't out in the uh, employment uh, arena. And our dad worked hard in the oil industry and, you know, he would come home and mom would have you know, get supper cooked for us, and there were four kids, and I was the youngest, so there was, I guess, 10 years difference between my brother and myself. Here's a story that made a difference in all of the lives of her children. So they had rented a house from a little Cajun family in Scott, and my brother, who was 10 years older than me at the time, was a little boy, and he would go play with the neighbors and go visit with the neighbors, and they were, you know, a nice Cajun family. And uh, one afternoon, he came in through the Sweeney door, according to my mom, and uh, he said, Me mama! And she just froze. And then when my dad got home, she said, We're moving. She said, I am not raising my family like this. She said, We're moving. She was getting ready to start and I didn't want to be Cajun. She's like, he is not, I'm not raising a Cajun child like this, no. So we moved to the city and then we ended up here in Bendel Gardens and uh, that probably made all the difference in the world. You know, her home and her family came first. Dovey remembers when her mom gave the basketball coach a piece of her mind for not letting she and her twin sister play in a tournament. We had gone to practice and practice and, but when the actual tournament came, De neither Debbie or I played, and my mother was very observant of that, and I remember her calling the teacher that was the coach, and I remember the teacher sitting in that chair and came over and had a little visit, and <laughs> Mama expressed her, you know, displeasure, you know, my parents were very social, even when we were young children. Our people were always over here. Mama always, you know, was involved. Um, I can remember her. Um, there was a festival in Morgan City and you, in order to, you know, get your children, um, I can't think of the name of the festival anyway, to be in it, you know, you had to raise funds to, um, for the school, of course, as Catholic school. And Mama would, you know, kill herself selling or baking or whatever, you know, was required of the moms to, to get us, you know, in the pageant. Rose notes the difference of how things are today compared to when she was a child. Everybody had it so much as they have today. I had some friends, yes, that 
lot of families had you know, more beads than we did, but today it looks like everybody gets anything they want any time. There were no TVs, no computers. I can remember uh, sitting by a radio. You know how they used to put like a versus a soap opera over the radio or any kind of program. I can remember sitting by a radio and listening to it on the radio. That's all the at-home entertainment we had, you know. Uh, for the longest, we didn't have air conditioning. The house was an old house. It was high ceiling, and we'd, we'd leave our windows open and have window fans. I guess we got used to it. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I was kind of shy uh, growing up, and from, from uh, grammar school, it was a Catholic school, and going into high school, you had to go from one class to the other and all of that. Whereas we were in one room where we were in the Catholic school. It was kind of, uh, as I said, I was kind of shy. It was kind of hard for me to get accustomed to. But, you know, we gradually. And I did play basketball a little bit in physical ed. She found that she had many talents. I liked algebra. Uh, I was pretty good at math. I never had to go to the principal's office, though. Her mother was a huge influence. As far as I'm concerned, my mother was perfect. Mother was always home. Never went anywhere. <laughs> Church. You know, home to cook for us. She didn't have any kind of help or anything. Uh, Daddy turned out okay, but, you know, he wasn't perfect. But I can't ever remember her even really fussing at me too much, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe if I didn't mop the floor or, you know, didn't want to dust or help her with the housework, you know, something like that. Yeah, she just was a good person. Well, I don't know if I was straight and narrow, I mean, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Can y'all think of anything I did wrong? <laughs> She did win kind of a beauty pageant once. In high school, uh, they, they would always vote. You know, every year they'd vote. Most beautiful, best looking boy, uh, best dressed, da 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 da, you know, most intelligent and all that. Well, I happened to get the prettiest, they didn't call it most beautiful. <laughs> and my youngest brother got the most handsome. Hmm, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> she also knows how to tell a limerick about a tutor. Oh, Joe. You want me to tell it? Yes, please. I'd love to hear this. A tutor who taught on a flute tried to teach two young tutors to toot, said the two to the tutor. Is it harder to toot or to tutor two young tutors to toot? <laughs> I've been saying that since school. <laughs> and she got a lot of gentlemen callers wanting to date her. Well, I, have a, I had a very strict father, very, very strict. I honestly, I didn't date hardly at all. He wouldn't let me. He would not let me. And I, I did, I did, uh, for what they call the prom there. Then, after I won that, I, I did have a date for that. But like going to the movies or something like that, what do you got with a never. He was my chaperone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd ever see that today. I really don't. But really and truly, uh, there weren't too many boys I cared to date anyway. It, you know, <laughs> it didn't bother me. I had, I had fun with my girlfriends. Then she met the man who would become her husband. Working at Johnson Chevrolet as a, as a uh, stenographer, bookkeeper, and the shop foreman in there some, uh, kept telling me, there's a young man I want you to meet. There's a young man I want you to meet. He told me that several times. How old were you? Oh, then I must have been, let's see, I'd finished high school, I'd gone to trade school a year. Well, I guess I must have been right at 20. And he said, there was Bill. He said, I want you to meet Bill. And I can, Bill wore those days he wore a Panama Stry hat 
spectator shoes is what they call them. Brown, you know, when they had brown and white shoes, but they wore black and white. You might not remember that. Anyhow, that's when I first met him. And <laughs> listen to this. This is a good one. He says, can I carry you home? What do you think I said? I don't know, I'm pretty heavy. <laughs> first time I meet this guy, he asked me out that night, we went to a movie, that we dated for two year, over two years before we married. She wanted to marry him for lots of reasons. A good dancer. <laughs> well, he was nice, he was polite, he wasn't fresh. You know, some guys are pretty fresh. <laughs> he was very handsome to start with. That's good. He was very nice. Oh, and I, were, I had been good friends with his sister Peggy and never even knew she had a brother. She never mentioned it. He was working in New Orleans and he asked me to marry him. Gave me a ring. On June 6th, he was being transferred to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So he came to, to see me with it. We talked it over. We called the priest. Went to the doctor with the Alexander, brought some clothes. Went to uh, last, we married at six o'clock that afternoon. On yeah. June 6th. June 16th. June 16th. Court didn't tell me married June 6th. June 16th. Becoming a mother wasn't easy. It was kind of hard. <laughs> but I had a lot of help. She had no idea till the very end that she was carrying twin daughters. I found out on a Friday and had them on Monday. Yes, it was a shock, a big shock. A place for everything and everything in its place. A neat freak, which I really didn't have to be as neat as I was. You know, I wanted everything just so all the time. I didn't have the finest of everything, but I think I had the cleanest. <laughs> Rose recalls when one of her twin daughters was supposed to get married. Okay, uh, she was supposed to get married. Her, you know, boyfriend, she, fiance, she had, was, gave her a ring and everything. We'd even call the church, rented a place, I think. And my husband and I went to his sister's, they lived in Pascagoula at the time on vacation. And she called and told me that she wasn't going to get married. Man, did I yell at her. Well, you canceled the whole, you know what, thing, you know? You you canceled the date. You go to the church. You tell the priest. You do, 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 do. About three months, and here she comes up to me. Mother, could I have a little wedding? I looked at a little. Well, she almost had as big as the W had. <laughs> that, that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, I screamed. <laughs> we almost sent the invitations out. We hadn't sent them, had we? No. And sadly, she took the death of her son and husband very hard. Uh, Courtney Collins, he died at 46 years of age. Oh, Brain injury. Courtney's so young, yeah. 46. And then the way Bill died. We were on our way to Dallas. But Courtney died in April. The 1st of July, the first little trip we take, because Courtney had been sick with cancer over two years, surgery, this and that. We were going to Dallas. <clears throat> Debbie lived there at the time. We got as far as Kilgore, Texas. Bill drove as far as Shreveport. We stopped for lunch. Dan would start driving. Bill sat in the front seat with him. One grunt like this, and he was dead in the car. Yep. Seventy-one is young too. <laughs> Gone, but not forgotten. The couple had a lifetime of memories. Memories that Rose thinks of often. I belonged to crew of Tacopar. We belonged to crew of Zeus. We be he belonged to Petroleum Club. We'd go there almost every Friday night. They had music, dancing, dancing, dancing. Oh yeah, we had some good uh, 
but good life. Her son Dan admires his mom for her strength and determination to always help others. So I know there are a lot of sacrifices that she probably did make in order, you know, to provide a better life for us. She she uh, holds herself with a lot of uh, self-respect, and uh, you know, it shows. Her legacy is. Uh, you know, her family and uh, the, the life that she provided for us. And, um, so I think, you know, she's been very successful. Rose is proud of the life that she's lived and the legacy that she leaves behind. But I was a decent person. I, I've never done anything wonderful, you know, other than get married and have kids. <laughs> and she is most proud of her family. As far as I know, they're not dope heads <laughs> and drugs. <laughs> i tell you one thing made me very proud. Dan, when he became king of uh, Bonaparte, oh, yeah. that, was, that was an accomplishment. I was very proud of him. So all in all, I think I'm very, very fortunate. I, you know, I think I'm fortunate my children uh, did as well as they did, and uh, you know, they said they did good to me. And I hope they have the rest of their lives to be as good as mine, or better. Rose has a final message for all who watch this video. I love you. Just stay as good as you are. <laughs> be good. Listen to your mom. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha